Uh, dear all, welcome to the afternoon sessions of the Bogota Final Conference. Uh, now we have in ahead of us a little bit more relaxed uh, meeting, part of the meeting, a conversation about the possibilities of future collaborations and cooperations. Uh, and um, uh, as you know, we uh, probably you've gathered uh, or you are a part of a Pagoda partner yourselves. Uh, it has been a very successful uh, project, at least from our perspective, and uh, there have already been made some attempts for future collaborations for Pagoda 2. We do not have any certain news about that application yet, I believe, or Antonella will correct me in a minute. Uh, but uh, whether that turns out to be successful or not, we are hoping that there are other avenues uh, for future work together. Uh, and uh, it is the purpose of this session that we uh, look at what the possibilities might be in these different frameworks, uh, uh, in these different fields related to cultural heritage. Uh, so uh, this will be an open debate, but before, be, before we open the floor, uh, we have two speakers from our Pagoda project who will uh, each give some ideas or some directions uh, on where uh, our future uh, cooperation may uh, go and what are the possibilities and of course uh, not also the people who are not part of the current Pagoda project are invited uh, to look for partners to network uh, in this event. Uh, so our first speaker is Antonella Freza, uh, whom you uh, probably uh, realized was sort of our Spiritus Agens <laughs> of the whole project, uh, also the, the kind boss, sometimes uh, strict if needed be. Um, and uh, she has given some thought to the possibilities uh, of cooperation within different European frameworks. Antonella, the floor is, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I prepared a very sketchy uh, presentation just to have uh, some ideas uh, to follow during uh, my introduction. So maybe Dunia, you can uh, launch it. Thank you. So the idea of this networking session is uh, to look beyond what has been uh, Pagode. So I will not refer exactly to the work that we did in Pagode, to the theme that we addressed in Pagode, but I would instead um, go and look together into the various possibilities that uh, the European programs offer to us uh, to continue the work of a Pagode, but uh, maybe also to launch new initiatives that are in our interest. Next, please. Uh, there are uh, several uh, programs, uh, and uh, I think that uh, three of them are related to actual uh, research, innovation, and implementation of uh, um, services and uh, products in the domain of uh, cultural heritage with a focus on digital cultural heritage. The first is Horizon Europe that has just started and this is what uh, I will uh, shortly introduce today. The second is the Digital Europe program. This is a program whose work program has not yet been uh, approved and in fact I asked uh, to the project officer uh, yesterday in preparation of the speech of this morning to say something but she said I cannot because the program has not yet been approved. So uh, the, the work program, so the program the EP exists, is uh, approved by the council and it there's a budget assigned, but we still don't know how it will be articulated. It is a continuation of uh, the Connecting Europe facilities, facility. So it is a kind of a continuation of the program that funded Pagode. And we expect that the calls will be organized in a similar way with 
the most of the resources spent to support, improve, manage, uh, uh, curate, whatever the core service, that is uh, the Europeana.eu, and this is the work that the, the Europeana Foundation does in collaboration with the, its uh, providers and uh, the aggregators. Photo Consortium, that is a partner of the Pagod, is one aggregator. And uh, surrounding the core service, the generic services, projects such as Pagode. Pagode is the project that developed stories, exhibition, gathered content, organized vocabulary around Chinese cultural heritage in European institutions. There are other projects that deal with sport, newspapers, uh, the 20th century, the 50s in Europe, so many different subjects. And each project has its own story, generally short and compact project. We think that DEP, DEP, Digital Europe Program, will be similar, but I cannot say more than what I told you. The, these are our guests, but there is not yet a printed uh, version of the work program that we can study and rely on. The second uh, complementary project to Horizon Europe is create, Creative Europe. This uh, is a continuation of the Creative Europe program that ended in 2020. It is organized similarly, but we have to take into account that while Horizon Europe is research and innovation, digital Europe is implementation, creative Europe is about cultural activities. So cultural heritage per se, in the way that we conceive it in Europeana and in the environment represented today, I guess, is different because in Creative Europe, in the Creative Europe program, the program is looking for activities, festivals, uh, films, uh, even exhibition, even archives, but not per se, not as a products or services as cultural activities. So if uh, we together or you by yourself uh, and your partnership wanted to address uh, Creative Europe, we have to take this uh, in strict account. Otherwise we risk to be excluded. Our proposals risk to be rejected because they are out of focus of the project. So I will not tell you more about Digital Europe program and the Creative Europe for the reasons that I told you. I will focus on Horizon Europe. Um, there are other programs. There are many other programs. And now more and more cultural heritage is a, a matter, a subject that is in the core of the European uh, programs. Uh, and in particular, I think that it could be worth from our point of view to uh, think about the research infrastructures and uh, the Erasmus program, because the research infrastructures belong to a, an area of development where even Europeana is, uh, uh, is in the in the loop, and the uh, Erasmus program, Erasmus Plus is called now, is the program which finances the liaison with the educational and uh, vocational training sector. So we know, and it was repeated this morning as well, that the, the digital transformation we are uh, uh, coping with is based also on uh, uh, skills uh, 
capacity on building on skills. And so Erasmus Plus is in this direction and it could be a really interesting hint. But, you know, the programs are so many, then we have all the regional programs. The programs are really many and I don't think that today we can cover everything. Just a few words about Horizon Europe. Next, please. Uh, Horizon Europe has uh, published uh, a strategic plan 2021-2024 that is as, at uh, the basis of uh, the calls that uh, have already started uh, to be published. The first uh, call is open now and uh, will close in October. Uh, what will happen next year is already fixed, published, we know when the calls will be published, how much and on which things. So I invite you to start from the strategic plan to um, enter into the logic of Horizon Europe and then from here to go into the details of the calls. Basically, the, the real uh, uh, approach of Horizon Europe to cultural heritage is that there is a strong link between cultural heritage, the arts, and the cultural and creative uh, business sector. Because it is uh, through uh, the articulation and uh, a collaboration of uh, this ecosystem that uh, we can imagine that the cultural heritage will become more resilient, capable to react to uh, changes, uh, disasters, uh, crises. We just uh, we are just living uh, the pandemic, uh, hopefully soon, and we have seen how much the cultural heritage sector suffered, but has already been. Uh, able to react well this capacity to react to the situation that imposes changes is the resilience that uh, we are looking for to generate cohesion because uh, uh, acknowledging the different cultures uh, understanding each other we can produce a better cohesion and this has been in the core of uh, pagode because it is in pagode that we tried to connect uh, our knowledge of different cultures and this has necessarily an impact an influence on the relationship between the people and organizations. And third, last but not least, to unlock the innovative potential of, of the European societies because cultural heritage is a source of ideas, suggestions, um, stimulations for the creative sector, for cultural tourism. So, there is an innovation potential that needs to be unlocked and it is through the links between the cultural heritage, the arts and cultural and creative industries that this can happen. Next, please. In Horizon Europe, the focus is concerning cultural heritage, research and innovation on green cultural heritage, digital cultural heritage, and innovation in the cultural heritage. So these are the three keywords, green, digital, and innovative. What does it mean, green? Green clearly refers to mostly to the physical heritage, to monuments, uh, um, to intervention uh, in uh, the urban spaces, uh, urban regeneration. So green, digital, that is not only digitization, but more and more now we talk about digitalization. So digitization is what happens when I have an object, I digitize, I associate the metadata and I put it online. And this has been the focus of the 
past 20 years for museums and cultural heritage institutions. But now that we are approaching a digital transformation, there is a, something else that is needed. That is the transformation that is uh, inside the heritage institutions. So new skills, new equipment, new organizational work, the impact of the smart working on this transformation. So transformation inside the heritage institution and the transformation in the relationship between heritage institutions and the ecosystem around them. That is made of public administrations, funders, business sector, schools, the educational sector. So the ecosystem that is around. Um, what does it uh, speak about in uh, its uh, articulation, Horizon Europe values. So this is a very intangible, very theoretical, and there is a nice project uh, that uh, ran a workshop last week called Uncharted. This could be a nice uh, uh, information for you. Pagode and Uncharted uh, had uh, established uh, a collaboration. Uh, monuments and sites, so the physical uh, protection, but also the digitization and the 3D re representation as a way to protect and preserve our heritage. Here there is a, a competence center that has been established in the last call of Horizon 2020 last year that is focused strongly on 3D uh, representation of a cultural heritage. For those who are interested in this matter, I invite you to look for it. Creative diversity. Uh, so traditions, intangible heritage, crafts, arts, architecture, literature, languages, theater, films, music, the media in general. This is an area, an area that is not only uh, cultural production, so production of the products for the cultural market. This is a, a part of the Creative Europe program, the, the media part of that program, but it is a research on values, preservation of monuments and sites, and the creative diversity. And to obtain a word, to reflect on our past, to shape our present, so to build our future. This is the mantra of Horizon Europe towards cultural heritage. Next, please. This is an infographic that I invite you to download, which speaks about the three areas that I mentioned to you. Uh, a green European cultural heritage, next. A digital European cultural heritage, and you can read in the infographics that is available on the Commission's website, the various keywords. Next, please. And an innovative European cultural heritage. Next, please. You have to, we have to look for the cluster two that is called the culture, creativity, and inclusive society. The areas of intervention are democracy, cultural heritage, social and economic transformation. As you see, cultural heritage is an area of intervention, but clearly there is a cultural heritage links also in the area of democracy and the area of research and innovation actions for social and economic transformation. Next, please. And uh, uh, this is the basis for the participation uh, in uh, European program, familiarize uh, with the participant portal, where there are uh, information about open calls, planned calls for, for seeing, and the closed calls that are uh, important to know, to be known, because they give 
ideas on what has already been done previously. And in terms of what has been done previously, there is a service of the European Commission called the CORDIS that uh, provides uh, full information about uh, completed the projects, running projects, uh, uh, consortia and the partners of these projects and the results that are available for use and reuse by the community. Next, please. And with this, I finish. Uh, I am uh, at the disposal for any question, but maybe as for this morning, I give the floor first to Costas so he can tell us his point of view on the specific topic of a pagoda that is the relationship with the China, and then we can enter into the debate. Please, Costas, the floor is yours. Just a moment. Can you hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay, fine. So let me share my screen. Uh, uh, uh. I'm sorry, but here it is. I can see it here, but I can see it here. Why show all windows? Okay. I'm so sorry, but. So, can you see my screen now? You mm, can see it, not in the presentation form yet, but in the presentation, yeah. not yeah. yet, but probably very, yeah, now it's, it's not okay now? Now it's okay. Okay, fine. So, thank you very much um, and um, welcome to the evening session. Um, this is a networking session and we really uh, want to make the best out of it and uh, I appreciate what Antonella said about the European calls and uh, perhaps um, some uh, comment on that would be that um, uh, it is for us uh, very valuable to see how European calls can connect with our uh, uh, expertise and uh, background. Uh, also in the um, under the prisma of um, let's say the um, uh, green deal and she said and the Bauhaus and the um, uh, uh, this uh, 17 uh, uh, resilience uh, um, reasons that um, are um, now a day is very popular the 17. I forget the NDG or SDG or sustainability um, criteria. So um, we have to have this uh, in mind for um, there are many calls uh, that don't, don't relate uh, directly to culture, but uh, relate indirectly to culture. And this would be very interesting for us. So back to my presentation, I have to speak about uh, what we are doing um, uh, above and beyond uh, Pagode. Uh, I represent my company here, Postscriptum, uh, who is among other tasks also responsible for the liaison of Pagode with China. And I will try to give you an idea of how uh, Pagode has uh, put a real um, um, milestone into this uh, liaison. But first of all, I would like to say that uh, Pagode is not a parthenogenesis, uh, that Pagode is a paradigm, that Pagode is a stepping stone. So these are the three uh, sections of my presentation. And uh, I want to start with Pagode is not a parthenogenesis because uh, there is a Europeana that has existed before Pagode. And there has uh, always been Europeana before that, which is a great idea and an even greater implementation. 
which is a kaleidoscope of European cultural expression in all possible media. And uh, since the beginning of the second decade of, this, of our century, back in 2010, this uh, virtue cycle of cultural data, which is aggregate, facilitate, distribute and engage, has become a standard for till now for over 3000 organizations for 28 countries, which have contributed over 60 million items of culture and history to this platform. So, um, Europeana is the one thing and all Europeana has always been an evangelist for diversity in promoting culture. So Chinese culture was meant to become a part of it because uh, next to Islamic Jewish and other European identities, China is really something that is uh, the other, let's say, pole of culture in the other half of the world. So, um, Pagode is not a parthenogenesis, means that it doesn't come, um, it, it was not a birth uh, without a partner. So um, there have been partners, uh, Europeana, and there have also been real people who has, have put this forward. Um, and as we say in Greece, history is written by friends, and we had friends that helped us to grow this initiative. On the one hand, Harry, who promptly embraced the idea and for evangelizing Europeana to China and addressed me to represent Europeana there. And in parallel, Antonella, a Europeana aficionado and the grandmother of a Sino-European grandchild, if I may call Libero, like this. Um, and uh, of course, my precious colleague Eric Tsai in Shanghai, a great marketeer, who helped me understand the culture in business and day life. And um, they have all been, um, all three of them, extremely helpful and supportive, whatever was and still is needed. And I really thank them all for that. So we have put a task force together and start working in line to approach audiences willing to hear of Europeana. And this was um, a preparation for our Pagoda project. So uh, we have been uh, addressing museum curators, venue managers, academia and governmental executives, and we're presenting Europeana to those in the last three years. We have been in quite uh, a few places in China promoting Europeana and its philosophy and have done also numerous online presentations. Um, then um, by late 2018, we have been um, um, setting up a network uh, that is to promote uh, um, the digital heritage projects in uh, Greece and uh, with, with um, uh, as a setting in Greece, but it is about uh, Sino-European um, uh, Sino uh, cooperation. Sorry, I was just trying to find my words here. Okay, so, um, and then uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, putting here many uh, companies, uh, academia, uh, uh, governmental organizations and uh, cultural heritage organizations together to exchange ideas about uh, digital heritage. On the other side, then in Vienna, we had um, um, signed an MOU, actually Europeana signed an MOU uh, with um, uh, Chinese Arts um, Academy of Social Sciences. Uh, Harry has uh, spoken on that this morning. Um, I would like to um, say that uh, within this framework, we had also had a um, network session um, in the ICT uh, summit in Vienna, uh, organized by the European Commission and the Austrian Presidency. And uh, the session provided the opportunity to establish a closer rapprochement and to explore potential synergies and projects of common interest in the fields of cultural heritage conservation and digitization between uh, us and China. And um, of course, um, there is a strong group with relevant expertise that uh, made the basis for Pagode. 
These are the partners um, under the leadership of the Minister of uh, Economy of Italy, which is uh, a really a strong driving force because all this what we do is a, is a development and economic growth um, task and project. And of course, uh, under the um, valuable uh, guidance of promoter, and um, our uh, very, very um, uh, significant content partners and uh, a university that was really brilliant in the terms and uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, knowledge on uh, what really Chinese heritage means. So um, having these prerequisites and the dedication of its partners, Pagode was born as the first project to enrich Europeana with Chinese heritage and European cultural heritage organizations. And this is, as Antonella said, just a little window to Chinese culture, but a first step to a legendary culture. So also Antonella said that we have been able with a very small budget and in just 18 months penalized by the pandemic to mobilize a wide number of institutions to gather interesting collections to encourage participatory activities and much more all thanks to the generous partnership we have found at the Europeana Foundation and now we are very proud to have accomplished that result which is uh, this um, uh, brilliant, uh, these diamonds we have now on um, uh, Europeana, thanks to Photo Consortium and uh, uh, Valentina and Sophie as well. So, um, uh, the, the, and then, nevertheless, the, the protagonists of all these are the content providers, and the content providers have really contributed to this uh, tremendous uh, thesaurus we now have on Europeana. And um, we will be able to um, uh, see uh, each of them tomorrow in uh, the first session uh, together. We will be tomorrow in the first session at 9.30. And uh, we will see each one of them and what they have contributed to uh, this um, uh, repository. So uh, my organization's task, Postscriptum's task, was, as I said, uh, the liaison with China. And so we uh, think we have really had the, uh, the full support and interest from major governmental institutions. For example, the first um, organization that we presented that to was a delegation of the European uh, Union to China. Uh, in Beijing and they were very supportive and very interested to um, uh, also promote this project in their channels. And also we had uh, today the, the live presentation of Mr. Xiang Xiaowei, the Minister Councillor of the Mission of the Public Republic of China to the European Union, who really uh, is interested in cooperating further with Europeana and uh, with us uh, feel very confident that Pagoda has built a basis and a stepping stone for future Sino-European cooperation, uh, which we will also see in the next slides. So Pagoda is a stepping stone, a stepping stone to uh, understand uh, digital culture also in the Chinese landscape. And there we have um, a structure that is under the Ministry of Culture and Tourism and under the National Library of China and the National Center for Public Cultural Development. So these two, um, let's say, uh, poles are, have been working with uh, Pagoda because the National Library of China is one of the associate partners and have also presented their um, repository to our workshop. And also on the other side, the Digital Library of China Cultural Center is under uh, Mr. Xiang uh, Xiaowei. So we think that in this uh, uh, very, very significant uh, library and um, cultural uh, repository as a Digital Library of China Cultural Center, we hope that we can also see in a way uh, our exhibition of um, uh, Chinese heritage and European organizations uh, be visible in um, uh, the near future. 
Um, so many cultural organizations and research um, uh, got to know us and Europeana better through Pagode. And we have all these uh, contacts available now for our partners or whoever is interested to uh, cooperate. And uh, so this is, uh, I think, uh, very interesting and very um, important to have the National Library of China, to have the Capital Library of China, to have universities like Shenyang, Fudan and Shaodong and um, uh, the Tsinghua University and the Palace Museum. And of course, the Chinese um, uh, um, Academy of Social Sciences, which is a uh, the biggest research center in China. So in parallel, also we have, uh, as postscriptum, we have submitted a proposal for China and uh, Central East European countries, a proposal that was um, not so successful, but uh, to be granted, but it was a first uh, joint venture with the Chinese Arts and uh, um, Academy of Social Sciences. And I think that what Antonella said is also that we can find out calls in uh, European programs that we can work together and apply. Uh, and of course, platforms uh, like Europeana and uh, Isthmus West in Greece and the digital culture um, uh, have uh, that carry these intercultural elements are getting richer through new content and members or followers. And also museums uh, like the Liaoning Museum and the Ningxia Museum, and also uh, the Art Center in Shanghai, um, uh, are interested in um, uh, hosting our digital uh, collection uh, and from and uh, show it, showcase it in their um, uh, showrooms. Let's say digital showrooms. Uh, and on the other hand, also creative industry companies are interested in promoting this heritage back to China. So uh, I think that was that. Uh, I think that uh, Pagoda was really uh, uh, a stepping stone and a paradigm for uh, such a cooperation. And I look forward to Pagoda 2 and to other such challenges. And uh, thank you all very much for uh being part of it thank you yeah, thank you costas you've been a very a tireless uh ambassador of of chinese uh, european cooperation or pagoda chinese cooperation uh in the field of cultural heritage so um i'm, I'm sure you will continue doing the good work um, it's uh, it's sad that during the, that due to the circumstances it was not able we Pagoda project was not able to be physically also represented uh, in China. Um, now uh, I will open the floor um, for comments, questions, uh, other suggestions re with regard to, to possibilities of cooperations, cooperations that might look a little bit like Pagoda or might look uh, like something completely different. As we heard, there are many different possibilities. And uh, I believe Eric also, uh, yes, he has already raised his hand, uh, has some ideas of uh, where uh, future work could go. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Antonella, uh, for the clear explanation about what the uh, European possibilities are. And thank you, Costas, uh, because we, of course, here we are in the context of the Pagoda project where we would like to walk further on together uh, on this road. Uh, but. I want to go back a little to what Antonella said. And one of the things that strikes, of course, is that uh, you have these different programs. And uh, Antonella said also, uh, one of the most important thing is to focus on what exactly is uh, asked for in these programs. Uh, otherwise you don't uh, make a chance uh, to, to, to get even a proposal passed on it. Uh, what in, in my experience, or in, even in our common experience with certain people here, uh, we know that there are lots of possibilities to enter in, in pro proposals and doing things like that. But on the same time, there is already uh, an existing world out there with uh, existing pr running projects or with existing uh, consortia that are already further on this road. 
So when we have to do something, we also have to take into account what does exist. And uh, I remember uh, that we, we, we made a proposal, I think Stan, uh, Alex was also in it and Antonella, uh, for a kind of a beginning of a European resource infrastructure. You know that Europe has uh, tens or hundreds of research infrastructures. I can name two of them in which uh, our institution is involved. Uh, one is the DARIA, uh, which is about arts and humanities, and the other one is ERISH, which is about uh, it's European research infrastructure for heritage science, which is more about, uh, more about scientific data, while DARIA is more about art, uh, art historical uh, humanities data. You have the same thing for social sciences. So if we want to find a place for ourselves in, in, in these things, we have to make sure that we know very well that these exist, that we don't overlap with them, because if you overlap with them, we are not strong enough as a beginning group <laughs> to, to have our position. On the other hand, you have to be also open to collaborate with them. And, and now I go back to this focus on what uh, Horizon Europe demands. I was wondering if you need to focus and really in the program, how bad it is, is when you refer to existing uh, research infrastructure or existing other projects. How far can you go in saying, okay, we want to collaborate with it. For me, it's not clear. Uh, so um, this is one of the discussions that we will have the next months and years too, if we will walk further on this road of uh, putting in, uh, in proposals. So this is more about general Thing that's happening on the European level uh, for research because we are a scientific institution so it's about research. Uh, if we now if I make a little jump back to what uh, Costa said and back to what this project is, uh, for the moment the thing that I see that can be, be, be developed is indeed uh, going in the way that we are going but expanding. Uh, expanding in a way that we will talk even more, there will be more cultural heritage, there will be more interesting ways in disseminating them, there will be more interesting ways in making links to universities, to, to, to the general public and all these things like that. What I don't see immediately now is, is the, the other thing that our institution does is, is this uh, pigment analysis and uh, other chemical uh, work on it. So for the moment I see not this possibility, but I think uh, given the, the interest from Europeana, from the European Commission, from uh, China, that in uh, that Pagoda future could be in one of these uh, programs that uh, Antonella explained, that we could indeed go there and expand, that it's, uh, not, not as an imperialist uh, <laughs> thing like that, but expand in what we were doing and making even, getting even more uh, publics uh, connected. So, um, yeah, and one, one, one last thing is uh, you have also the European Open Science Cloud. So maybe we have also to look into in all the, the information uh, that it's not only Europeana. I, uh, I love the thing to Europeana, but maybe we can also use European, or Euro European Science Cloud, Open Science Cloud, as a kind of a linked repository where all this information can be interconnected. Yes, thank you very much, Eric, for uh, for your intervention. These are this is indeed a very interesting question. Does it always have to be something new, or where are the ways when you can join, where you can join the the sort of uh, existing types of things, right? Not uh, start a new and another the other thing about the pagoda. So yes, yeah, not just expanding in in the size in a way, but also in the diversifying the, the ways of collaboration. Um, if anybody, especially our main speakers, Antonella and Costas, have uh, any immediate reactions to what Eric said, uh, I would invite you to raise your hand. There's also Valentina who raised Yeah, her I hand. know, I know. I just wanted right. to see if there is somebody reacting immediately to, to your comments. Otherwise, uh, huh, Antonella, please you switch your mic on. The general uh, point, I think that uh, we are a community. The community is uh, large, very large, and so in a large community we have to make groups of people who have common interest. I think that this is exactly the role of a photo consortium. And the photo consortium is an association. It is uh, instrumental to Europeana because it aggregates uh, 
photographic content to Europeana, but it is also a, a subgroup of this large community. The community around Europeana is thousands of people. So it is uh, impossible to follow all the lines. There are smaller groups. I think that what the photo consortium has done in the last years has been exactly this, to keep an attention on those who are interested in digitization, online access, capacity building, not, not a, a lot of ICT research. It is not in our remit to do ICT research, but to use what is available in order to support archives and memory institutions in becoming the digital. So um, I don't know if I answered to the question of Eric, but I think that this is the focus to create subgroups and to remain linked. So it is for this reason that I'm very proud of the results of the Pagoda. The, the community and I give ID. The floor to yeah. The community ID is, 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 is very, very important. The, the, the risk I see or the, the, the risk I saw, and I can't prove it, of course, is that uh, since the landscape uh, as, as a kind of, there is a budget for several things to do, but the, the interest in landscape is bigger than the budget is available. So we have more than one community. So uh, and we experienced this in, in discussions before, of course, also with, with people who are working on a bit on the same thing, but are in another community so and sometimes it is like a kind of a competition uh, which gives bigger risks to 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 land a, a proposal sometimes we really need to collaborate and and it's always kind of a dancing on a road yeah. thing it is a question of trust i guess because yeah. if we trust each other then we can accept that once i do things with you another time with another one you do things with me another time with somebody else but we trust each other so i think that this is very important to have a, a good trust but i give it the floor because i'm uh, uh, conscious that it is already 418 Yes, Valentina, you can switch your mic on yourself, but uh, maybe there will be a, a, an echo effect. Yeah. yeah, I think this is because we are in the same room, Antonella, Mauro and myself. In fact, most of you would have recognized that I am not in my kitchen and the background <laughs> is different because uh, happy... The Museo della Grafica, I arrived early because later, you know, we will have this mini, mini, mini event and I am very happy of uh, the possibility finally to, you know, meet in person, even if a small, a small number. No, what I wanted to, to add to this whole discussion that also started this morning, you know, the, this story of digital cultural heritage and what we do with, uh, with this. I think that one point that in Pagode was uh, touched only slightly is the entire thread of the educational reuse of digital cultural heritage. And in this sense, I think that Antonella in her presentation earlier mentioned the Erasmus Plus program. Um, photo Consortium as such has started now to enter in this uh, uh, new environment of uh, programs from this uh, other strand of funding. And in fact, we are partner in two um, Erasmus Plus projects, one that is uh, rather big, one that is very small. Both of them are trying to um, reuse digital cultural heritage in education and to uh, improve the digital skills of teachers and of learners. Now, very uh, briefly, just to, to mention this, uh, the um, first of these two projects is named Citizen Heritage. It is a project we are doing together with another. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, I mean, um, yeah, it is a project that we are doing together with another European aggregator, 
our colleagues and friends of uh, European, uh, European Fashion Heritage Association, and with the KU Leuven and NTUA, and another university that is the Erasmus University and the company in Greece that is named web to learn It is a small group of partners, but for a rather ambitious project that lasts three years. And in fact, the idea is to uh, improve uh, the um, educational programs uh, in the area of digital cultural heritage. In particular, the project is developing a methodology for uh, citizen participation with digital cultural heritage in the area of research about uh, digital science and humanities. Um, where is the link with Pagode? I think uh, it is interesting to see that uh, also in this project, we are forced to move uh, actual events with the students in online events. And what we did so far actually was to leverage on the experience and good results that we had in the crowdsourcing ex um, annotation campaign with Pagode, also in this uh, uh, in this project. In fact, we have done in May, and we are having another one in October, um, crowdsourcing events with the students of the university who are annotating collection of digital cultural heritage. Exactly the same thing that we actually did uh, in the annotation pilot in Pagode. And we see that there is a real uh, feedback, a positive feedback from both students and universities. Um, the first event was uh, um, happening, uh, uh, well, was supposed to happen in uh, Sofia at the University of Sofia. It took place online, uh, but indeed the um, collaboration with the University of Sofia and the uh, Department of Philosophy was, uh, was really positive. And for them, it was also a first occasion to try a tool uh, for uh, uh, easy uh, metadata enrichment and annotation. So this confirms that indeed the steps that we have taken go in a good direction that really engages with the citizens, with students and also with educators. The second project that we are involved in, it is a rather small project that runs 13 months only. It is named I Square Identity and Innovation. And here it is interesting because we've been involved as photo consortium because of our um, digital skills and because of the capacity building effort that we have already initiated and this group of uh, um, partners, which include the secondary schools. So uh, now we are more used to see digital cultural heritage in higher education, but indeed the trend is to empower also other types of, of, of school, other levels of education to uh, uh, leverage on digital cultural heritage for more modern uh, uh, ways of teaching and learning. And in fact, in this uh, uh, I-Square uh, project, we are uh, uh, delivering uh, on Monday, next Monday, um, our capacity building uh, uh, input in a round table with all these partners. And it will be a lecture. It will be given by Antonella, but of course I also collaborated in the development of this, in order to try to um, help this uh, people uh, who are maybe less acquainted that, than us or than university teachers to discover this world of digital resources for cultural heritage, uh, for digital cultural heritage resources for education. And indeed, we are going to talk a lot about Europeana and uh, Europeana education community, Historiana and other tools that are uh, conceived exactly to, you know, stimulate the use of digital cultural heritage in educational program, not only at the university level, so with master students or bachelor students, but also for younger pupils who are, uh, to be honest, uh, 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 the very target of this because the, they are digital native. And so it is really up to us to, uh, you know, show them uh, uh, the possibilities and, and they will build upon this much more than we would ever do, I think. 
So yeah, that was uh, a comment I would like to say uh, to confirm that it is not only the CEF program, it is not only uh, the European environment, which uh, uh, is an opportunity for institutions and organiza organizations like us, but also all the educational sector is certainly um, a high potential uh, strand of, of work for us. Uh, thank you, Valentina. Yes, uh, I mean, oh, we, our experience was great uh, you applying or adopting this. Uh, uh, yeah, Antonella? Uh, it was uh, great adopting uh, these uh, tools, crowdsourcing in the, obviously at the university level, but I can really see it work well for, for much younger uh, audiences as well, or much younger participants too. Um, so uh, also it will be, I will gladly look at the two projects you've mentioned, Erasmus Plus, and it's, yes, this is uh, something uh, that uh, we universities are, for example, speaking from university perspective, we are always thinking just about cooperating with universities, but we're looking less at the Erasmus programs uh, involvement in the programs that are, you know, looking at uh, different levels of education, either it's uh, be it primary, secondary schools or lifelong learning uh, and so on. So thank you for, for these uh, comments and also uh, possibly some examples of oh, where things may uh, develop. Uh, Mina has been waiting also for a while to, to say something. So uh, first I'll give the floor to Mina and after Mina, Eric, it's you. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I want to make a small comment uh, adding to Valentina's um, uh, comment before about uh, Erasmus Plus. Uh, not only education and capacity building, but also digital cultural heritage could maybe we could reflect on that and how uh, digital cultural heritage and European could act as an uh, inspirational digital space for artistic uh, creation and production. So I'm talking about uh, Creative Europe uh, programs and how can you correlate um, heritage with contemporary art and all these activities that relate to, to artistic uh, production. Just this uh, comment uh, to reflect on that. Not only pagoda, pagoda specific, but maybe Europeana in a broader sense. Thank you. Thank you, Mina. Would somebody like to respond to what Mina just Said no, just uh, words of agreement. I saw also many nods. Uh, thank you, Mina. Eric, uh, you're on. Yes, I, I just want to add. Uh, so, so pagoda here. We are in a, a kind of a European uh, environment uh, because these these kind of projects are specifically uh, to work together with European. Of course, if you are in the horizon or in in, in other projects, it's not only about European. It's about Europe. Uh, so if we, for instance, do something about education, indeed, we can, can go to the, these other uh, Erasmus Plus and things like that, but we can use Europeana in a way that Europeana has itself uh, an education community working group, Europeana has a research community working group, but especially for education because, uh, 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 Sophie will be mad with me, uh, Fred. Uh, Trajan is uh, our, uh, what is called, the uh, director of uh, of photo consortium is also plays also uh, an important role in this European uh, education community uh, working group thing. So we 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 need if we go to do that we need to 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 use the possibilities of networking uh, which are available. So indeed we can work with Europeana. We should work with Europeana, and if there are other possibilities, we have to do the other possibilities too. And we can we can uh, in this group here we can be kind of a, a, a bridge, a central point, a node where, where things can come together. Thank you, Eric. This seem like uh, some really nice words to finish this session. Uh, it's all right on time, but uh, I won't be quite as uh, dictatorial as that. So, uh, <laughs> If uh, there are other comments, uh, questions, suggestions, 
Antonella? I have a small uh, suggestion. I would invite uh, Alex, uh, if uh, you are still uh, with us, uh, just uh, to give uh, you a, a small uh, um, taste uh, of another project uh, of uh, the family of uh, the general service uh, projects uh, of Europeana. And it is uh, just uh, to have the idea that uh, the projects uh, can have uh, different uh, shapes, but uh, in my opinion, what is important uh, to have a successful project uh, is uh, to have uh, a very clear idea of the range of uh, contents that uh, we are going uh, to to use in the project, because the projects that take whatever, just to have more content in Europeana leave unsatisfied. So I, I like instead the weave because it is really weaving the right net. Please, Alex. Thank you, um, Antonella, for this. And um, I would like to say hello to everyone. My name is Alexandro Stan. Um, I represent uh, IN2 Digital Innovations. In, and um, we're an SME from Germany, and we have been involved in this, let's say, area of digital cultural heritage for a while now, um, latest as the coordinators of the WIF project, as Antonella just mentioned. Um, I, unfortunately, I had some appointments during the day and I was in and out of the entire conference. I'm, I'm apologizing for this, but uh, for the bits that I got, I think that uh, indeed, as um, it was mentioned, there has to be, let's say, a bit more coordination between uh, these different activities. And it's always good to create links between um, um, all these different people and organizations that uh, do such great work in this area. Um, a couple of words about Weave. Uh, for those of you that might not know this, this is a new project also within this um, um, CEF um, and Europana strand. Um, it is, uh, let's say, uh, based on a couple of pillars. Um, on the one hand side, it is about uh, aggregating new content about uh, intangible heritage, especially uh, to Europeana, but also 3D um, uh, content representing immovable um, cultural heritage. Um, with this in mind, because of these two aspects, actually, we're looking also at um, uh, some important aspects of how intangible heritage and tangible heritage relate to one another and um, also at how um, especially intangible heritage from communities that uh, have been traditionally underrepresented or misrepresented um, can, let's say, um, uh, now have a voice for themselves and can uh, on their own, uh, let's say, um, specify and um, uh, say which um, in in which way their cultural heritage should, should be represented and viewed by the um, outside world. Um, so that that's that's in fact another strand of of the project, looking at how communities, um, different cultural heritage communities, uh, can engage um, and uh, can engage with uh, uh, with Europana as well. Um, and we have a strand of activities related to capacity building there as well. So that's a very important aspect. And uh, because of this, I think it, um, many of you, uh, it would make sense, I would say, to um, check out our website with culture um, uh, that you. Um, I'll write this in the chat right afterwards. Um, because in the coming months, there will be a number of uh, activities that are very much related to this strand, to the um, uh, to the capacity building. Um, finally, um, uh, the, the last piece of this uh, puzzle, which is Weave, um, is about technologies that um, can help solve these issues in terms of uh, how to um, access, uh, store um, 3D cultural um, heritage content, um, how to um, let communities uh, share their uh, stories and their experiences and um, um, how to better make sure that this digital content um, uh, is annotated well, that uh, when it's made accessible to Europana, then it can be found. So that's the short version of it. Um, um, if uh, you will be um, attending the, um, the Europana conference in the next uh, month, I think um, you can hear uh, a bit more about this. And of course, um, you can ask anything uh, to me or Antonella as well, because uh, she knows this through Photo Consortium, of course. 
who is a partner there. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, that was indeed uh, interesting. And I mean, I've already noted down the name before and uh, this short presentation made me only more interested in it, especially the, the part that where you mentioned that, you know, dealing with intangible and then on the one hand and immovable on the other also forces you to think. So there are certain uh, theoretical insights maybe in the way people relate. Uh, the way you present and so on heritage so this is my researcher you know orientation immediately the focus is on that aspect but i'm sure other things are yes. interesting as well if, alexandra yes please if i may add to this this is precisely a very interesting part of the project because of course looking at the the tangible heritage is there because of the intangible one so they're interconnected but in the digital world there somehow there's been a bit of a divide between the two and uh, we were trying to uh, let's say, make this gap a bit smaller. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any further comments, interventions, presentation, short presentations of other uh, projects? No? Uh, well, we are, well, uh -huh, Kostas, in the, the final second, you managed to raise your finger, so please, Kostas, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to, to say that we have in our company also Stylianikos Topoulou, who is a professor from the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. And um, I think she has quite relevant projects to our Sino-European projects. And I would like to uh, invite her to say some words and perhaps be one of our future partners in uh, potential projects. So Stella. Thank you, thank you, Kostas. Thank you very much. Well, hello, Pagodians and uh, Europeans. It's a, it's a lovely gathering here. I really, I'm uh, very much enthusiastic, enthusiastic of uh, all these uh, very interesting uh, projects that uh, I hear that uh, you work. Um, let me just give you a short file. I won't be long. Um, I'm a professor in the Regional Economic and Tourism Development at the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki, the Department of Economics. Uh, I'm also the um, president of the European Interdisciplinary Silk Pro Tourism Center uh, that was established in uh, Aristotle University in 2017. Uh, I'm the director of the master program in tourism and local development, the um, institutional coordinator for the agreement, the scientific agreement between Aristotle University and the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences and the Erasmus coordinator for, uh, for the department. Um, so uh, these are uh, the things that I do. Meanwhile, uh, during the last uh, decade, uh, I was the lead partner coordinator for um, a number of, uh, or coordinator for Aristotle University for a number of projects. Uh, Erasmus Knowledge Alliance, Erasmus uh, Strategic Partnership, uh, Erasmus Capacity Building, uh, basically on um, uh, topics of, uh, of tourism, but uh, um, also on topics about the uh, cooperation uh, between um, universities and uh, uh, the industry. For example, we had um, uh, a project European Knowledge, Erasmus Knowledge Alliance, the European PhD Hub, which uh, is actually uh, a project um, of collaboration between the academia, that is the PhD candidates, uh, and the industry. So we created a platform here at Aristotle University uh, where um, uh, the PhD candidates uh, can promote their work and at the same time the uh, the industry, and by industry, I mean all the um, uh, production sector, uh, can um, express uh, their uh, demand about certain uh, uh, research uh, topics. Um, at the moment, we are running a, a project uh, related to the Silk Road uh, Cultural Heritage. It is a Black Sea uh, program. Uh, uh, 2014 to 2020. Um, it is uh, the name is Silk. That is that is Silk uh, Silk Road local culture. 
it is a partnership uh, with um, a universities in uh, a university in uh, in uh, Bulgaria, the University of Varna, a university in Armenia, um, R- Russian Armenian University, um, a research institute in uh, Georgia, and an NGO in uh, Romania. So what we are, we are doing actually is to have the identification, uh, documentation, and uh, mapping of uh, Silk Road cultural assets. Actually, this uh, this morning I gave a presentation of uh, of all this at the at um, a workshop at the Black Sea Economic Cooperation Organization. Um, and uh, then uh, we uh, we create uh, an entrepreneurial network for the sustainability of the project. So once it will be over, uh, there will be uh, local, uh, regional, and inter-regional networks of uh, businessmen on uh, tourism and culture uh, that uh, would like to uh, create, uh, I don't know, synergies, projects, uh, so as to uh, capitalize, uh, as far as tourism is concerned, of the Silk Road Cultural Heritage. Uh, all this uh, uh, will, will be uploaded on a um, uh, platform that will um, uh, serve the Silk Road uh, Digital Observatory. So uh, actually it will be a map where uh, all information will be uh, uploaded. We, we uh, work, um, um, I couldn't say in depth, because this needs uh, a lot of uh, uh, specific expertise. You know that better than I do. But we do have uh, a team of uh, professors and uh, P- uh, uh, doctors and PhD candidates uh, from the Department of, uh, of Architecture, from uh, Archaeology. So it's not only economists, okay? Uh, so what we did is to create a sort of uh, identity card for each asset that uh, is uh, related directly or indirectly with the Silk Road cultural uh, heritage. Uh, for uh, the eligible areas, the eligible regions in Greece, that is the region of Central Macedonia and the region of Eastern Macedonia and Thrace, um, we have a study of nearly 980 pages. So uh, it is a lot of work, but however, we consider that uh, this uh, work uh, scientifically should go in depth by each um, uh, discipline. I mean, the archaeologists and then the architects and the historians. Uh, we consider that as a first, um, as a first approach, actually. Uh, this uh, and then also we will have a labeling procedure. I mean, uh, the enterprises that will have the label that will be certified to the project, not the Silk Road, because. Only the World Tourism Organization can do that. Um, this uh, involvement, involvement, involvement uh, with the Silk Road um, heritage started with a study that uh, a report that we uh, prepared for the World Tourism Organization in 2016, uh, when WTO, together with the European Commission, launched the project Western Silk Road. <coughs> maybe as a response to the Chinese uh, strategy, the OBOR. Uh, they launched this, um, uh, this initiative, the Western Silk Road Tourism Development. So we participated, we prepared uh, a study for uh, the Silk Road um, uh, footprint all over the country. And then we realized that uh, there were far too many little diamonds all over the territory that we should uh, work and uh, make uh, more research, and that was the, the Silk Project. Uh, meanwhile, in 2017, at Aristotle University, uh, under the auspices of the World Tourism Organization and the Ministry of uh, Tourism of Greece, uh, the European Interdisciplinary Silk Road Tourism Center was, uh, uh, was established, and um, this is our uh, hub, actually. So uh, during this, uh, these years, uh, I consider the most um, important outcome that we now have uh, a team of um, young researchers. They have been invited to 
participate, but they all uh, are able to, to uh, attend uh, this uh, very interesting uh, discussion tomorrow. So they have been already registered, uh, Costas. Uh, and um, there are uh, PhD uh, thesis yeah, that uh, are on, uh, on, uh, on the topic from uh, architects and uh, economists. Uh, and um, I believe that uh, uh, this is a good start for, uh, at least for our university, uh, to, to work uh, on an interdisciplinary approach mm -hmm. on the Silk Road heritage. And, and by Silk Road heritage, we do not consider only the Chinese, even though this is the, the major part, but consider the whole of, uh, of Asia. Yeah, thank you very much. This is definitely <laughs> Silk Road is one of the keywords that connects China and Europe and has connected it for centuries. And even in contemporary political parlance also connects uh, again, uh, these two points that were also part of our project, right? China and Europe. Uh, so uh, with this, I would like to wrap up the, the networking session. I think we've heard some very interesting uh, uh, information about the existing projects, the future possibilities. Uh, and uh, I thank very much Alexandru for creating um, a, a networking opportunity. So please look at the chat session. Uh, if you want to exchange contacts, uh, just follow the link Alexandru has uh, posted. Um, with this, uh, we conclude that this part of uh, the afternoon's activities. Uh, after a brief, very brief refreshment, we're back at uh, five o'clock for the book launch. 